Resourcio, an online bazaar where you can find, share and create resources. What about the uh, focus of rights? Now, when we talk of uh, rights, uh, we ha ought to have an understanding of what exactly is feminism also. Now, feminism, it is exactly uh, talking about our identity, understanding the identity. It's about togetherness. It's about uh, the fact that uh, right has to, uh, is, it's not a charity, it is a right. And we have to normalize emotions and question the toxic relations and conceptions and concepts that has existed in our society. Now, as far as uh, the entire rights are concerned, uh, we have to talk of rights actually in a three different manner. We have three secret E's. Now, what are the three secret E's? First one, education. Second one, encouragement. And the third, empowerment. Now, education, that means it starts from the home. That means taking or teaching all of us in the house uh, the concepts of equality. It's not, not, it is not giving, it's not stating that the world belongs to one particular gender. It's not the privilege of a male. It's not the privilege of females. It's not the privilege of transgenders. The world and the space is for one and all. And the society, the society has a lot of misconceptions, as I've already uh, talking about certain uh, 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 very toxic concepts relating to life and rights and uh, uh, the freedom also. So that it, it must be educated and lots of information comes from books and teachers and schools. And, um, and we are talking about encouragement, that means Encouragement also comes from home, the work, the society, the person, and the empowerment comes from uh, erasing the gender blind spots that are within each one of his minds. Because there are certain gender blind spots. For example, we have, we have often heard the, the talk, don't cry like a girl. Now, what's this particular stuff? Don't cry like a uh, girl. Every person is a human being. Every person has to uh, vent their emotions. So all these blind spots, we have to question. And what makes, how can you question these gender blind spots? Now, teaching about law, teaching about understanding your rights. Now, what are the rights that we have? What are the rights that the genders have? Now, uh, as far as the rights are concerned, uh, basically it's a wonderful world. It's a world because each gender has their own peculiarity and each gender has its own beauty and magic. So as far as the females are concerned, uh, the fact is that we have a empty number of laws which talks about rights, okay? Now, starting from birth to death, we have laws. Now we are being born into this world uh, with the help of the uh, MTP, uh, the Medical Termination of Pregnancy Act, which talks about, and also PNDT Act, which, uh, which is very specifically talks about uh, annihilating a person on the basis of a gender, on the basis of a look. You cannot exercise. You cannot just finish the the, the baby in the uh, the fetus itself in the fetus stage itself. So that is impossible. So with, now just understand the dichotomy that that illogical situation in which you need a law to protect your life to be born in this particular world. And again, if we just move ahead, what are the rights that you have? You uh, as a human being, you are a human being. You have a right to life. You have freedom. You have dignity which is being uh, which is being um, actually narrated and cemented in the very base of the constitution itself in the preamble itself so dignity all those uh, the right to privacy everything is there for uh, 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 the uh, the women just like uh, the uh, every human being all rights are there 
but how your life is not a mere animal existence and so law death gives you support so that all these rights are being exercised i was talking about the law that helps you to be born now what the, what is the law that ensures that you get education you have a right to education which talks about helping every girl child uh, which makes you a right to education a uniform one so with that you know you you can access education now if you enter the college if you enter the colleges uh, equal space is being given equal spaces your dignity sh should be respected all your rights should be respected and of course gender discrimination should not be uh, practiced in the spaces where uh, the 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 kids study and uh, here we have to understand the illogical uh, concepts that uh, that uh, the the uh, these teachers especially um, try to uh, introduce in the minds for example uh, in yesterday yesterday years you know when as kids when you we used to make noises in the classroom or when the boys used to make noise in the classroom the teachers used to say look i'll just make you sit near the girls look this is a wrong concept which we try to inject in the minds of uh, the kids out there that means look it, it is something it, it is not right that that particular concept so every gender has its own space now when you move ahead marriage look marriage is your choice right to family right to marry and right to found a family that is your right you can exercise your choice according to your interest you can decide if you if at all you want to marry when you want to marry whom you want to marry and how exactly and to what extent you can move on in the marriage now within the marriage if you find any abusive treatment whether it is marital rape whether it is physical abuse whether it is emotional abuse whether it is economical abuse how what sort of abuse is there you have a lot to protect you that is the uh, the protection of a woman from domestic violence so the act is there and the act is also narrated persons who can help you out you have the magistrates you have the police officers you have the protection officers who will come to help you the only thing is that you have to exercise that particular right and again if you are being tormented by your kith and kin for a uh, dowry related a dow for dowry again you have a dowry prohibition act now the fact is that the presence of law is that you have to exercise the provisions of the law now if you enter your work spaces now the fact is that again you have a law which talk, the posh act which very clearly talks that women has to work in an environment which is congenial for them they should not be subjected to harassment in any form of sexual harassment whether it is the glances whether it is the whistles whether it is a remarks whether it is promises whether asking for sexual favors whether threatening uh, the women for not complying with the uh, demands which have which is sexually colored sexually passing sexual images uh, then uh, uh, passing you know like haunting that particular uh, uh, lady so all these are being prohibited by the posh act and again the moment you feel that this is this is not right such glances such remarks the messages that has been coming into my inbox in the emails via emails or in my web uh, in my um, uh, uh, in the personal spaces are wrong immediately complain the icc because government of kerala they it, they have made sure that all the public sectors and the private sectors they must have an internal complaints committee being constituted and uh, you can approach the internal com complaints committee and they have to go through the, the complaint within 7 days so uh, look in the workspace also you have a lot to help you out now talk about the property talk about the succession aspects yes you have laws to protect you and uh, at times you also need a little bit of correction also because uh, my co panelists will agree that the guardianship act you know it never recognize the presence of women there so uh, and uh, we had to approach the geeta hariharan she had to approach the supreme court stating that look father and mother are both equal and it's not only the father who can be considered as the guardian but you know the mother is equally empowered to be considered as a guardian and again we also have uh, we can also find instances when suddenly women lose their name because uh, when they are born they are they are being given a name and 
uh, the the father's name has been taken uh, as granted the mother's name never find a place because and then uh, after the marriage they, many women face the uh, they have been actually forced to change their name look the and uh, are subjected to again at times women are also being compelled to change their name look your identity is the feminism that which we talk about feminism definitely it is protecting your identity and of course we have laws which take strict actions against uh, uh, against uh, the uh, abuse, uh, against rape, against sexual assault that has been committed on minor kids, etc. We have the POSCO, we have the, uh, the strict criminal laws, uh, which has been enunciated. So uh, the laws, definitely we have nearly 50 plus legislations, which talks about uh, the women's uh, rights and protects the women's rights. But uh, what exactly what you what we really want is uh, awareness as far as the rights are concerned, assertiveness as far as these rights are concerned, and the attitudinal change that is, must be reflected. The attitudinal change is really, really important because uh, as I told you, one particular uh, uh, concept that is in the society is cooking is something which is, uh, uh, which is earmarked for uh, the female gender. No, cooking is just a life skill. Any person can learn cooking. And um, it is not only the women that need uh, cooking. Another concept is that a woman's life is finished when uh, once she is divorced. So uh, why should a woman's life be resolved or uh, revolved around another person? Uh, look, each gender have their own space to grow and they are independent also. And another concept, the attitudinal change that we need as far as the rights, exercising of rights is concerned is that I often hear the statement, women is being given freedom. Now, who are you to give freedom? Freedom is there, the, is, is equally there for every person. You can enjoy the freedom. And uh, uh, the fact is that uh, uh, what we need persons who try to understand, uh, who try to get along with us. So what I have to mention in this particular International Women's Day is that at the choices, the awareness of rights matters, understanding the rights matters, and also implementing the right uh, also matters and definitely it is our choice to continue uh, in our space not to lose our identity uh, and to say no to toxic relations to say no when we find that the relations are have uh, transformed itself into toxic and of course break the rules not for creating problems in the society but break the rules so that we are not burnt in the fire break the rules so that we are not drowned in a catastrophic situation break the rules so that we are not chained in the fetter forever so thank you maitri this is what all i can say as far as an intro is concerned thank you so much maitri and thank you resource team for uh, giving me an opportunity to be a panelist in the session thank you thank you so much ma'am that was a very enriching um conversation that is a very very enriching uh, you know speech from your side and i would like the audience i would like to draw your attention to the poll the resocio poll which you could you which you can see below the window uh, on a scale of 1 to 10 how would you rate your knowledge of women's legal rights i request the audience to uh, respond to the poll thank you and now we move on Now, over to Milo. Happy to part of the, be part of this panel that endures to support women and to realize how truly empowered they are in the eyes of law. And on that note, here is wishing you all a very happy Women's Day. Well, as you are aware of for the topic of discussion today, by the panelist is basically know your rights, women's legal rights at work and at home. So I'll just take you through the uh, rights empowered for women at workplace. Uh, as we just happened to hear ma'am's uh, inputs, 
which uh, she's just actually covered most of the area, but still, uh, I'll just scheme through the whole thing, just in a very brief manner. Well, when we look back to the history, we find that initially the women were under tremendous torture. We see if there's been Sadi system, how dowry was prevailing. Um, I mean, and after the uh, divorce, they were not permitted to remarry. All these aspects were something a taboo in the society. It was all our educated leaders like fa Father of the Nation, Mahaja, Mahatma Gandhi, and Sri B. R. Ambedkar, who took up a step to see that, to, to bring to the notice of the women saying that you step out of the house, come out of that framework, and try to endure in the public sphere in fight for your independence. So as the country started fighting for independence, I would say even this particular section also started to fight for their independence, for their rights. And then slowly as the British rules, when we took over the country or rather when we attained independence, from the beginning of the, you know, the constitution itself, most of the aspects were taken care. If you just glance through Article 14, Article 14 says the right to equality, which means, and let me just remind you, this was way back in 1940s, and this was drafted, where they were conscious enough to know or say that everyone should be treated equal. So Article 14, irrespective of your sex or any other caste, creed, or anything, you are, ought to be considered equal and there should not be any discrimination. Similarly, Article 16 of the Constitution also guarantees equality of opportunity in public employment, irrespective of sex. So whether you are a male or a female, you apply for a job or for that matter, an educational institution for, for your graduation, there can't be any discrimination. So slowly these aspect or rather the aspect of where you're not to be discriminated, everyone to be treated equally, we started gaining that right way back from the day of independence. So Article 14 and 16 contemplates the said aspect. Similarly, the 73rd and 74th Amendment of the Constitution ensured Reservation of seats for women in rural and urban local bodies to give them a greater political voice and empowerment. Now we find that 33% of the reservation ought to be given to women for election. That's why we have so many MLAs and at the same time MPs in the we see, we do see find when we watch TV, when the news, when there is a discussion happening at in the assembly, state assembly, as well as in the Rai Sabha or Lok Sabha. It's so happy to see that there is a you know, voice by the woman for, or rather challenging their rights and pointing out their rights before the legislature to make sure there is equivalent protection for women in, in, in respect to law. And so as we go by, we find that laws have been brought in. For example, Dowry Prohibition Act 1961, brought in to see that dowry is prohibited. Then came domestic violence, which I would say even which in spite of the said act there, it's, it's prevailing, it's high time, but we find there is a large or rather a decrease in the same. We need to appreciate or accept that fact, not just because there's a protection of right, but it's because of the education, I would say. I would rather that would be my opinion. But still, if something such prevails in a domestic side, you have a law which takes care of your domestic violence. That is Protection of Women from Domestic Violence Act 2005. Then as you step out from your house, you, you are actually protected inside your house by this particular act. 
and when you step out from your house if you go to workplace you are not you are also protected there you can't undergo any kind of sexual harassment so that's why we have sexual harassment of women at workplace prevention prohibition and redress act 2013 then we have immoral traffic the immoral traffic prevention act of 1956 so it is wherever we find there has been a loop the legislation has made sure it has been you know tackled in such a way and they've come out with the legislation to pro- and then very we've been seeing an acid attack and once that has become prevalent in the society the legislature took a further step to incorporate section 2 326a in the ipc that is a strict penal provision which has been incorporated against acid attack then we have an amendment made to the factories act because factories act it is especially related to women it is made to sure that they don't work at the night hours basically protecting their rights when there is equal remuneration irrespective whether you are a female or a male based on your work based on your time what you consume you are directed to be paid so there is a equal remuneration act of 1976 then we have the maternity benefit act 1961 which provides a security of wages and employment to women immediately before or after confinement due to pregnancy so these are the few of the acts which takes care of the interest of purely the aspects of relating to a woman and then if i go by one of the, you know each of the acts i would say the protection of sexual harassment of women at the workplace which i would be rather dealing this all started way back in the year 1993 when a social act- activist banvari devi was gang raped because she stood against a child marriage she voiced her opinion in the village of rajasthan a um, lot of couple of uh, ngos took over the issue they filed a public interest or rather a matter before the supreme court Supre- at that time let's let me just point out there was no law which took care of a women's protection at the workplace so basically the law which need could be brought in during the argument was human protection law human rights so the argument was raised on that and then the court came out with the judgment stating that the legislature indicating or bringing to the note of the legislature it's high time that we bring up an act formulate an act to protect women at the workplace and that's how it is based on the vaishaga versus state of rajasthan uh, it's a 1997 judgment it's a full bench judgment where the honorable supreme court categorically you know clearly stated what exactly the government has to do and that is how we now have a act which takes care of protects the interest of women at workplace well what are the ingredients or the sections that we have in this particular act i'll just in a scheme through that in the sense if if you are working at a workplace which has a, a woman strength whether it's one you need to have a pan if she undergoes any kind of uh, harassment she has a right to make a complaint whether it's a frivolous or not is something which a pan will take care of they'll go through it and once they receive a, such a complaint they have to intimate the person who it is against alleged against who is given an opportunity of being heard and then they consider the whole aspect so the guidelines is such that the duty of the employer or other person in workplace and other institutions take care or protect the interest of a woman and then the employer the workplace and other institutions are responsible to prevent or deter from such commission of acts of sexual harassment and comp- in in a, and when a complaint is preferred as i pointed out as said it has to be dealt by the panel and panel once if they find it is something is an ingredient or an aspect as happened or such a such an issue had prevailed they have to place it before the district committee so that is how the act enumerates of 
to you know, states the actions to be taken by the employer when it relates to the harassment at workplace. It is, in other words, is also known as POSH Act, P-O-S-H Act. So that is prevention, prohibition of sexual harassment of women at workplace. Now, the further if I go, whether it's related to the same act, the other aspect is there are penalties. There are, um, I mean, the, the, the issue, the complaint committee, once they receive it, have the powers of a civil court and are required to provide for a conciliation also. It's not as if the, the person is not given an opportunity to conciliate and finish it off in front of the committee. The committee can also take an action as per the act and come out with a penalize or penalize the person and see that whether he is removed from that organization or punished or file an FIR. You no know, intimate police station that such an act has happened and file an FIR. These are the procedures which is, which is contemplated in the act. But apart from this, what is the other law which protects the women at workplace? Another is because everywhere when we talk about protection, we automatically think it's only the harassment. It is not so. Apart from that, there are other things, as I just pointed out, or stated, maternity leave. Who takes care of that? Similarly, minimum wages act, because you can't be subjected to discrimination just because you are a woman. You need to be taken care of, irrespective of the fact that what sex you are, based on the work, the time which you put in, you have to be, you have to be paid. And then, I'll just take walk to you through the law of maternity benefits. That is a bet. The, it's an act formulated in 1961. The main provision of the act is that you get a 26 weeks of paid maternity leave. One month of paid leave for any illness due to pregnancy or miscarriage. Then we have medical bonus of rupees 2,500 to 3,500 if the employer provides prenatal or postnatal care. This is just a gist of that act, but this is the basic thing of that act. And apart from this, at the workplace, I, I have not been able to place any other uh, provisions or act or uh, for law which protects the women at workplace. Summing up the whole thing, I would say at present or rather now, with this particular century, women is protected in a large manner. Court does not keep quiet. Of course, you go before a court by filing a case. It takes time because it's a procedure or nothing else. So at present, it is women who is more protected than man, I would say, because it is, which is required, domestic violence. But you have, one thing is we should not misuse it. We, we find, being a lawyer, I do see people after being separated for three or four years, and the fifth year you go before the court, for, before the magistrate and prefer a complaint, saying that I was subject to domestic violence. Because you know, once you file a petition, he'll be arrested straight away by the police, based on the allegations. Once that happens, automatically there's always a scope for settlement. Yes, even the lawyers also need to be uh, means said they are, we are also responsible for it because we encourage to do that. But again, that has been misused. So I would rather, I mean, I have been voicing my opinion said there should be a timeline or a limitation, period of limitation in that. Court has not looked into so far. We don't have a judgment or a law which says that there's a time limit. But of course, taking into account of these facts and circumstances, court do appreciate those aspects. So there, we do misuse that. Women do misuse that. I don't, I, I don't fear to say that. But it need not. When you are protected, when you have a law, make sure that you are within the framework, approach the court, and fight for your justice. We all believe the justice and judicial system, and it is open and is only based on the law that it happens. 
So no. So we need to protect. And similarly, when it goes to your workplace, you are protected. So we have cases. We have uh, we have we've seen cases of there are cases which based on when you are not considered for your promotion, suddenly they file a petition for harassment, saying I'm being harassed because I'm not being promoted. Court has dealt it rightly. So please don't misuse it. That's all my humble request is. So there are laws which protects each one of you. Everyone in different circumstances, whether you are at home, whether you step out, whether you have been harassed by any man, you are not, you know, no men are supposed to look at you. Court has gone to that extent. So you are protected well. Please make sure that you go within the framework of the law. That is all my submissions. Thank you, Maitri. Thank you for the opportunity. And I hope uh, I made my points a bit clear. That's all. Thank you so much. Milo. Not at all. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot. It was quite interesting how you connected this with, you know, glimpses of history and then took us through the constitutional provisions and the pertinent legislations and case laws on this. And as we all know, you know, even judicial activism is so brilliant in our country. And even the Supreme Court through various landmark judgments has always been the protector of, you know, has been the frontline protector of these rights. And, you know, I, I really believe that, you know, it should not be misused because it is, a, you know, it is a shield and, you know, like an arm and a shield, it should not be misused. It is something to protect. Yeah. That's so what I didn't want to use the word shame or anything because we are now in a discussion. I can't, and the only yeah. man, you know, <laughs> yeah. and I'm, no, no, I'm sure yeah. Shanti will not spare me also if I use something like that. <laughs> no, I was, I'm saying so. It's so law has always been like a shield to protect, and I think we should respect that shield which has been protecting us. Everyone, I'm so honored to be invited on this panel on this special day. Thank you, Maitri and Neetu and the entire team for inviting me. And uh, I've heard my colleague, Advocate Milo, he's a good friend of mine too. So he and teacher has already elaborated all the details regarding the women's rights and all. Hope I'm audible. Am I audible? Very much, Shanti. Yes, Shanti, very, very much. much. Yes. So I hope um, teacher and uh, Advocate Milo they all covered all this academic things and all, especially the acts and all. And as a proud woman, I should say that women hold the half the sky. So that is a true thing. Uh, see, uh, this is a special day and all the women and the world is celebrating like a women's day. So I don't agree with that because, you know, that there, there, there is no need for a single day for the women day and all because every day we are celebrating and we are celebrating women cause. So in this day, I'm just recollecting um, very honored ladies like Benazir Bhutto, Indira Gandhi, and I'm Lady Margaret Thakur. And at the same time, in present, we are seeing some people or you know some uh, girls like you know, somebody stabbed in the college by her lover, and we are seeing that. Many persons have, many women are suicide, right? All those things. So if uh, I compare with these two categories, now I just feel like there are many laws, there are many rights which confer so many rights on women as per the all statutes, like protection of women from DV Act, if you are a married woman, if you are living in a shared hall house, and definitely, as Nilu said, if you're going, if you're out of home, you're stepped out of home, definitely you will have protection in your workplace. Many acts. But now it is our choice to define whether you need a right. What right you need? Because we all know the Indian Constitution as per Article 14, 15, 16, 39, it confer all the rights for the women. So instead of that, still we are saying that we need right. So what right you need? So that is a defined area. That, that should be defined. So it varies from one to one. So if you ask to a girl of teenage, if you will ask her, what do you want? What right do you want? She's in, I, I need freedom. I need that. But if you ask 
to you know a college girl the answer will be different if you asked a non married women that was different and if you asked a married women that is also different but everyone needs freedom so what freedom you need so that should be defined because why i am talking about all these things because the academic things the rights which is which conferred by the statutes and acts which is already covered by both other panels no i think as a proud woman as a lawyer as a you know as celebrating women i should tell you which you know which will definitely make you think so what do you need why you conduct such things why you listen to all this things? so yeah uh, initially i told my three i don't want to get into you know all these things and all so we'll only you know limiting to this academic things and all but once into this into this panel discussion i was over hearing all the things which our uh, panels have discussed so i thought like okay so that is very well conveyed more than that nothing to be conveyed you know the uh, you know uh, there is a committee um, definitely that committee's things are like into your rights are this that is envisaged in this so what do you need more so there i feel like okay i should talk about it see uh, as i told there are so many statutes as the panelists said there are so many sections which can further rights but how about it enforcement two days back also i have seen um you know you can call her like you know victim she said that she is not victim so she herself opened up in an interview that the most the most nightmare days of her life as in court so there i thought like okay the court it is a building a person is sitting there who is there to enforce the rights conferred in the statute so still she like a victim you can call her she like a girl so she saying that that is the most nightmare on days for me so there i got my point that okay see we are seeing that many women are sitting on the enforceable position we know that many powerful women are the presidents of many commission and they are sitting as a judge they are sitting there and they are capable to enforce such rights so i feel some disagreement in some point because being in a society we overheard that so many uh women who are uh, presiding some position who are responsible to do their things it's not doing so so in that thing i really have a disagreement for that so i really want to point out those things because you need to understand that the right is there but the enforcement is different so i just want to uh, point out one thing to the women who is capable to hold that position that you are a woman you are the authority you are the rank holders and you are the eminent personalities of laws and or in many other area so you know you studied all this laws you studied all this rights of the women and you are holding there in that position not just to hold that position not just to say that okay my relative is holding that position it's not that please don't forget that you know all this rights implement that enforce it because we all knew that the incidents happened in this kerala or over the scenario it's a very heinous crimes we have seen so as a society as a cultural society especially in kerala or india we are looking for a crimeless society so make sure that it should be a crimeless society so for that if such heinous crime has happened make sure that that will be punished that will be punished with the most punishment which is envisaged in the statutes so that is one thing now i just want to point out that i'm coming to this workplace harassment and all these things because we all knew that um mainly when we are talking about the rights of the women normally we say that there are statutes there are acts like prevention of uh, uh, prevention um, dv act like domestic violence act so it it all has very simple schemes once you understand the scheme of this act it is very very simple if you are a married woman you see that 
okay, I'm having this much of problem in the house and you are staying in a share hall house. You are still in that relation. You are being harassed. You're being manhandled and your all the sovereigns has been taken away by the husband or the family. Now people, what, you know, even the in educational women, what they are doing, they just call the, you know, the lawyer like us. I've been subject to this cruelty. So what does my remedy? I heard that there is DV Act. So this is what. So please understand that. So when you can exhaust this thing, you should be a married woman. You should be staying in a share hard house. Some women are approaching us like, you know, after, you know, getting divorced and even I'm getting calls nowadays, I am a divorced woman. I want to file a DV Act against my husband. I want to exhaust that. So please understand when you can exhaust all these things. See, if you are a married woman, you are in a sharehold house, you are subject to any such of this cruelty, including your, you know, about the sovereigns, your gold, mental or physical, anything. You have remedies through this act. And the women, especially the women who are watching this webinar, please understand that you have mainly three remedies under this act, section 192021. You are entitled to get protection orders from the husband even i know the clients who is acting in i mean who is an actor definitely who's into direction who's into you know many other powerful scenarios in the society they are not getting protection and recently i went for a case like you know she is a i don't want to reveal she's a director she's a very well-known director the movie she's directing movies with you know well-known eminent persons so she got that capacity she's directing and what happens is like her husband he used to send messages to other people in the location, mainly like, you know, that the producers, the actors, and he's threatening them. If you act on his mo her movie, if you work with her, you will be in trouble. So I'm filing this, this case is against her. So all the actors are hesitant to, you know, work with her. They ask her, okay, if we assign this project, will anything, any harm will happen to us. Why can't you settle this? Why can't you settle this? Why can't you settle all the things? So even before that, she had filed domestic violence. So she has filed this protection, uh, all those things under DV Act in the court. So after all those things, the court asked this guy to come over and he came. And the court, especially one, I heard that you are sending these kind of messages to her co-workers. So that's also in workplace. I need to clarify that too. And this guy said, no, 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 I am not. Then she, he, the court said, she's really apprehending that you will hurt her even at her workplace or at her home. He said, no, I, I won't. The court warned him personally, you know what happened on after two days. She called him on the night, say like 10 o'clock. And there is a protection order also. And she called him. He's there on the pretension that he wants to see the child. She opened up the door. He manhandled her. And he just destroyed all the articles inside the home. So in that 10 o'clock, court is not there. Protection order is also there. So now it comes the enforcement and all these things. But still, I asked her to do something to call the police and, you know, the enforce and all. But even after that, you know, FAR is registered. If you have a protection order under this DB Act, even after this protection order, if someone is trying to uh, damage you or if someone is trying to hurt you, definitely you can call the police and ask them to get an FAR. So, you know, the theory and the implementation, there are a lot of differences. If at all, you know, these all the things, these are the sections which is granted, which is granting us the rights, all these things. How will you enforce it? It should be enforced by the court of law. Even after enforcement by the court of law, there is an order. Even after that, if such violation is happening, what will you do? These are all the things you get to know. Then also under this TV Act, you will have the right to relief, like monetary relief, if you know there is any loss or destruction of your property, both movable and immovable, and you're very sure that your property has been destructed by um, damaged by your husband or any of his family members. Maybe your father has given that property in front of love for you. That is yours. Definitely that's yours. That is for your betterment. I won't suggest that that is for your child. No, you are first. Whatever your parents given, it's like the gold or property that is yours. So it is your choice to give or not to give. So make sure that because we are living in 2022, so I'm a mother. So I have a girl. So it is my option how to mold my child. It is my option. 
So what I can give to my child is like, I can give her this criteria options, how you will select a person. Okay, recently, I just want to point out things. I asked, uh, you know, a teen, a teenage girl, it's a college girl, girl, you know, okay, how, I just want to know because, you know, in part of all these things, I'm having a research about these things. And so what does this people, after hearing, you know, the girls are stabbed in the college by the lover and also what is the mental status of that lover or this girl, why you need a lover, all those things. So what is the criteria for selecting a lover? Definitely, this is a women's day. We are talking about the women's rights and all. But the women should think, what do you need? How you will select? That is also a point. I think that is also to be discussed in this time. So I was thinking like, okay, what was a girl's criteria for selecting her partner? So definitely, I'm, I'm just um, thinking like, you know, somebody will say that, okay, I need a fair guy. So I need a manly guy. I, I need a guy with a long beard or something like that. Have you ever heard that, you know, a girl is saying, a woman is saying that, I need a man who is capable to maintain me. It is actually the women, especially nowadays, they don't think so. They don't want to tell. Why? Because it's a part of women empowerment. I'm capable of maintaining myself. Yes, of course, yes, you need to be. But that is exploiting. Now the men are really want of this kind of girls who is capable of maintaining herself because we hold this empowerment because we are capable of maintaining. But that is for your security. That is for your betterment, not for your partner or your lover or their family's betterment. Definitely we can use that if we are going in a better way. So I think being here by all these crimes in the society, especially to this college girls and all. So the criteria is very important. So as a proud woman, as a mother, it is my responsibility to tell my child. I cannot tell that you should marry or you shouldn't marry. You should marry this guy, this guy. No, I can't. But I can give her suggestions like, you know, this should be the criteria. This is the society demands because, you know, look at Amma's, look at your mom's, your mom's life. I had this criteria and all. look at my life. So through this only, I just can give only the criteria for her. So I'm it sorry to interrupt. Not... We are running short of time. And we have some questions oh, from the audience to take. Yes, yes. Okay, so anyway, okay. thank you so much for sharing your experiences. And it was a good toast, you know, to your tribe. And thank you. I mean, it's good that you encouraged you know, other women to actually voice their opinion. And, you know, it is actually very important to rise, you know, rise to the occasion every time. So thank you so much for that particular insight. And let us take questions from the audience. I would request the other panelists to also turn your video on. We have some questions from the audience. And okay, number one, what is a good legal site to get an overview of such laws for women? Well, <laughs> you're asking the wrong people. <laughs> you know, me and Shanti will not say legal site. We'll say you can approach the lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> That's a very, very fascinating answer. Well, uh, whereas I do find because uh, just like when the patients now approach a doctor for a consultation, they right. do a thorough reading and they go and just, you know, put it across saying, Am I got this? Have I got that? Should I do this test or that? Similarly, nowadays we find the when the clients come, they're well read or uh, they have a good information of the whole thing and they put it across. Will this section apply or will this, this section apply? They would have, uh, they would compare themselves with some other cases and they come. So basically, if you know, you Google, there is no specific India Kanun is one site where you can just go through the whole Sorry? thing, which also India Kanun, where you can see that uh, when you type particular issues, it explains and gives a uh, background of the whole thing, the law which uh, promulgates the whole thing, and then there are also judgments uh, and the precedence to that. All right. Thank you. So that right, actually... Uh, Shanti. Anything else? Shanti, Bismi, ma'am? Any I other suggestions? I about all the things. Nowadays, the clients are very, you know, sharp. Uh, they know what they want. Like, you know, if... Right. If you see architect and says that, do that, do this and all. If they're seeing a lawyer and say that, do that, do this, because they are well versed. <laughs> <laughs> all right. In fact, that draws us to the poll today. You know, on a scale of one to 10, how would you rate your knowledge of women's legal rights? Let's hear from the audience. So one to four, 
uh, the one to four, 50 percent uh, is one to four and five to seven is 25 percent and eight to 10 is 25 percent. I think we need to have this not just every women's day but I think we need to have the session once a month because I think people are quite low on their awareness of rights as they have you know mentioned in the poll today so that's the result for the poll in this session and we move on to the next question over to you Bismi ma'am there is a notion that feminism means superiority and not equality your comments please Any other panelists? The question is, there is a notion that feminism means superiority and not equality. Your comments, please. Uh, well, uh, unfortunately, it's still a taboo in the society where you say feminism. You know, other than the present generation, I would say the earlier generation, or rather, let's say they don't take it in a good, uh, they always take it with a pinch of salt and they say, oh, he, she's a feminist. I don't know why they term it's been used in a wrong right the term is used right. in a right. very wrong yes, manner it's a wrong perception yeah perception is totally wrong so yeah it's just how the society takes otherwise feminism, feminism is a good concept it is a very good concept it has been pursued by um, perceived in a very good way like you know milu like people i should say that <laughs> because it's a great concept but it is uh, wrongly, you know. Uh, All right. So I think it's time to conclude. And there are some more questions. I think uh, you can all write in to contact at Resocio. The panelists will reply to you via email. So thank you so much, everyone. So as we all know, women empowerment is something which is very critical to achieve gender equality. And uh, so let's all stand together to reinforce women's dignity, identity, and individuality within the professional as well as the personal sphere so that it fosters growth. And we also achieve domestic, social, political, and economic justice. And as we know, awareness and the attitude change is the first step towards enjoying one's rights. And I also believe that women's empowerment, it is something like a state of mind a mind without fear, a mind without conflict, and a mind filled with conviction and above all, happiness and peace. So on that note, thank you so much to all our panelists and the participants of this uh, session, Know Your Rights, conducted by Rososio. Thank you so much, Rososio, for this opportunity. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank, thank you, thank you very much for the time. Thank you. Rososio an online bazaar where you can find, share, and create resources. Looking for the perfect slide deck to ace a presentation? Need smart templates to get an edge at work? Log in to resourcio.com. On Resourcio, you can find content about nearly every topic under the sun. You can also create and upload content in your area of expertise. From PowerPoints and PDFs to templates and audio, You'll find multiple formats on Resourcio. We're also multilingual, so you have more options at your fingertips. Once you log in, you'll get a bag full of lumens, our virtual currency. With this, you can buy the resources of your choice and get started. Buy, sell and share resources at Resourcio, the online bazaar. Start resourcing today. Resourcio. Find. Share. Create.